Hello, my name is Astral Gamer Steve, and this build recommendation is a follow up to my first one and uses most of the same components for the same reasons. So, if you've already seen the first one, you might as well skip through for the CPU, motherboard, and RAM because that's all that's changed. But I wanted to show you how you can make some really significant improvements on it for a bit more cash. In any and all PC build recommendations I make, the prices for components are rounded to the closest £5, as prices will fluctuate anyway, and they're based on the cheapest vendor unless I specify that it's my recommended vendor. So, for the significantly improved CPU, I have chosen the AMD Athlon 2 X4 750K, which you can get for £60 or $90. This is quite like the CPU in the first guide, but better in every way, except power consumption of course. At 3.4GHz it's faster than the other CPU and easily fast enough for any game you throw at it. With a 4MB cache, this can store twice as much data for practically instantaneous usage. With a quad-core CPU, you'll be able to take full advantage of your graphics card in demanding next-gen games. Also, it should be noted that you need a graphics card when using this CPU. Some processors have built-in GPUs called integrated graphics, but this one doesn't. Also, integrated graphics is terrible. It really goes without saying that you need a separate, known as discrete, graphics card for a good gaming PC. For all this extra power and hardware, you'll be spending slightly more on your electricity bill. It's certainly not the most efficient of processors. For the motherboard, I've gone with the ASRock FM2 A75 Pro 4M, which you can pick up for £50 or $80. It's compatible with the CPU, which is always a good start. Again, almost everything about this board is an improvement on the previous recommendation. Not as many USB ports, but they're USB 3.0, which is supposedly 10 times faster than USB 2.0. It's more like 3.5 times faster in real world testing, but it still makes a big difference. Plus, 4 USBs is enough for most people anyway. SATA 3, this is basically up to 2 times faster. SATA 3 is 6 gigabit per second, SATA 2 is 3 gigabit per second, and SATA 1 is 1.5 gigabit per second. 7.1 surround audio is an impressively high-end spec for such an inexpensive board. You very probably won't be using it to its full potential, but it's there. Now, hold on to your butts! This micro ADX board, costing just £50, supports up to 64GB of up to 2600MHz RAM. If you're not familiar with all this tech speak, that roughly translates to INSANE! so insane that I highly recommend you don't buy a 46 gigabytes of 2600 megahertz RAM because you only use so much RAM at once and the rest is just sitting there not contributing to performance at all and you are definitely not going to use that much RAM in any game in existence. For the graphics card I've still gone with the AMD Radeon 7790 overclocked 1 gigabyte which you can get for £85 or $130. As I've said before, with a gaming build, a good graphics card is essential as this determines how well your system will run games as long as it isn't bottlenecked. This is a surprisingly good graphics card for a low budget build. 128 bit is enough to utilise the standard 1 gig of RAM in this card, but if you're going to buy a 2 gigabyte version, I would recommend looking for one with a 192 bit interface which may mean looking for another graphics card entirely. I would seriously recommend 2GB of GDDR5 RAM if you're expecting to play next-gen games and high-end current-gen games, but this card handles quite well with just 1GB. Very fast GPU clock speed and memory speed for a budget build, however, it's the overclocked version so it's even faster than normal, at a slightly higher power consumption. You may want to consider overclocking it yourself if you can find a cheaper non-overclocked version because overclocking is actually very easy and completely free. A single stat you can use to measure the power is teraflops or tflops. This has 1.79 and the GTX Titan has 4.5 and that is the single most powerful single GPU graphics card on the consumer market. Also, don't worry about the Titan's double precision. That is pro grade tech and it comes at a pro grade price. The Titan has the same specs as the 780, but with double precision and 3GB more RAM, and that would cost you £300 extra. Not worth it for games. For the RAM, I've decided on Kingston HyperX Beast, 8GB, 
1866 megahertz which you can pick up for 60 pounds or 90 dollars here we have the awesome hyperx beast series of ram from kingston that i look to when i want really fast ram this is going to allow us to utilize some of the ridiculous potential of our motherboard 8 gigabytes, like I said in the previous build video, is ready for next gen games as they will be looking to utilize the 8 gigs of RAM in next gen consoles. Also, 32 bit programs only use 4 gigs of RAM maximum, but having 8 gigabytes will allow you to take full advantage of newer 64 bit programs. 1866 MHz is very fast RAM, by no means the fastest in the HyperX Beast range as they have some of the fastest RAM in the world, but it will give you an edge. For the storage, I've still gone with the 1TB Western Digital Blue, which you can get for £50 or $75. 1TB is a good size for gaming PC, even if you're doing video editing as well. I've easily filled up 2TB of my 3TB hard drive because of the 1080p videos I've been making for the channel, and game files are only going to increase in size, so I wouldn't go less than 1TB from this point. Western Digital have a helpful colour coding scheme which helps you choose which drive is best for your specific needs. I still have to make a separate video for this, but basically Western Digital Blue is the best balance between performance and efficiency. For the case, I've stuck with the NZXT Source 210 for £25 or $40, very cheap. The NZXT Source 210 still has enough room for all our components. The build quality is surprisingly uncrap for a case this inexpensive, and it even has seven 120mm fan mounts. I have a couple of recommendations for that actually, either the Bit Phoenix Spectre Pro, which does a good job of cooling, an excellent job of being quiet, and looks really good, or the Noctua NFF12s, which are the most hideously grotesque things I've seen in my life, and more expensive but are possibly the best fans available in terms of cooling. Links to both in the description. For the power supply I've gone with the Corsair CX430 for £30 or $45. No need to change this. With a more powerful CPU you will be using this PSU more fully. Plus it's 80 plus bronze certified which means it's 80% efficient and because of this you can tell it's good quality. You should never go for the cheapest power supply you can find because a poorly made power supply can and will short out your PC components. Getting an 80 plus rated power supply will generally cost you a bit more upfront, but you'll save money on your electricity bill in the long run. So that's my build recommendation for $550 or £350. With an extra $150 or £100 compared to the previous build, you can transform a cheap decent current gen gaming PC into a cheap good next gen gaming PC. Is the extra money worth it for a faster CPU speed, more cache, more cores, USB 3.0, SATA 3, more upgradability, more RAM and faster RAM? Absolutely in my opinion. I'd recommend you just save up a bit longer because there is a big difference between these two machines, especially in next gen gaming. But why no improvements to the graphics card? In a way, it has been improved as before the CPU was a bottleneck, in other words, it couldn't handle the performance that the graphics card was providing. With a better CPU, the two components are more evenly matched and the graphics card will be able to do a better job. So I hope you learnt something from this. My name has been Astro Gamer Steve, as it always is. You have been watching this video, and I will see you next time.